So yes guys, let's start the new topic, valuation of business. One simple method as far as the valuation of business is concerned is discounted cash flow method. There might be some inflows, there might be some outflows. You need to calculate what is the net cash flow, apply the discount rate. A sum of all the discount rate will give you what is your discounted cash flow method answer that is a valuation of business. Let's try to take 28th problem and let's try to see how it goes out. Miko Limited gives you the following cash flow estimates. So from 2003 he started with 2000 lakhs and 2004 to 6 there is a compound growth rate of 6.5%. 7 to 10, there is a compound growth rate of 9.5%. Compound growth rate in sense, year on year you have to increase. Apply 20% discount rate, what is the value of the business? Just for your understanding guys. Year starting with 2003 up to 2010. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Cash flows. Everything in lakhs. Starting with 2000. Compound growth rate of 6.5% up to 2006. From here, from 2007 onwards, apply a growth rate of 9.5%. First year, 2000 plus 6.5% is 2130, 6.5%. Again, 6.5% on 2130 is 2268.45. Again, add 6.5% on 2268.45. Let's round it off to two decimals always. Two four one five point nine zero, add nine and a half percent now. From here, from two thousand seven, you get nine and a half percent. Two four one five point nine plus two six four five point four one is nine and a half percent added of two four one five. Again, two six four five point four one plus nine and a half percent. Two eight nine six point seven two. Next year again at nine and a half percent compound growth rate. Two eight nine six point seven two. Again at nine and a half percent last year. Three four seven three point two four. Discount factors take twenty percent as the discount rate. So present value factors twenty comma n. Start with the first year. Come on, one divided by one point two. These are the present values. Get the discounted cash flows. How do you get discounted cash flow? 
cash flow into present value factors and strike the total this is the value of business calculate and directly get me the value of business Yes, guys. So, similar way, the question cash flows will not be given to you so clearly from now on. Let's see how to calculate now. Turn to the next one, 29. Sham Garments Limited is a company which produces and sells to its retailer a certain range of fashion clothing. They are made from following estimates of potential cash flows for the next 10 years. So, 1 to 10 years, the cash flows are given to you in lakhs per Sham Garments. Kids wear is a company which owns a series of boutiques in a certain locality. Boutiques buy clothes from various suppliers and retail them. Each boutique has a manager and an assistant. But all the purchasing and policy decisions are taken centrally. Independent cash flows of Kidswear is given to you as follows. 1 to 10 years, this is given to you. Sham Garments is interested in acquiring Kidswear 
in order to get some additional retail outlets. The following cost benefit calculations are, are, are as under. Net assets of Kidswear is given to you. Some fixed assets, investment, stock and creditors. The fixed assets amounting to 50 lakhs cannot be used and their net realizable value is 45 lakhs. So this will be realized immediately. Stock immediate realization is 470 lakhs. Investments to be disposed are 212 lakhs. Some workers are to be retrenched for the estimated compensation of 130 lakhs. Creditors to be discharged immediately. And liabilities on account of retirement benefits accounted to not accounted for in the balance sheet is 48 lakhs. Estimated cash flows on a combined business of 1 to 10 years is given to you. So after both being amalgamated, these are the cash flows. What is the maximum value that kiddies wear of kiddies wear which sham garments can quote? Show the difference in valuation. Had there been no merger, use 20% as a discount factor. Now, how much will sham garments pay to kiddies wear is a question. Now guys, 1 to 10 years, sham garments as by itself in the first year is earning an income of 1500 cash flow if they are combined then the combined cash flow will be 1800 that means sham garment is generating an additional cash flow of 300 in the first year take the second year independently sham garments is earning 1700 in the second year after amalgamating it is 1900 so additional cash flow of 200 Independently, sham garments without taking over kiddies wear is earning 2000 in the third year, while after takeover it would be earning 2300 again additional cash flow of 300. Like this, I can identify what are the additional cash flows which sham garments earns after taking over kids wear. So, that additional cash flows can be discounted and we can get the value of the business which sham garment can pay for kids wear. Along with these cash flows from 1 to 10, I also have cash flows at year 0 because in, point, in points after your net assets, whatever he has given, if you observe very carefully, he's talking about disposals, he's talking about realizations immediately after takeover. All the cash flows which are given to you after your net assets, they are all at year zero. So uh, having a discounting factor of one. Because immediate realization, as of now you get cash, there's no present value factor to be multiplied with. So if we get year zero cash flows, we can find out what is the differential cash flows from one to ten. By comparing independent sham garments cash flows with the combined cash flows with sham garments. So that will be the maximum value that sham garments is willing to pay for the kids wear. He is also asking you, show the difference in the valuation had there been no merger. Had there been no merger, kids wear cash flows are given to you. So if you directly multiply with the cash flows with the present value factors, you automatically get the value. Got it? So let's try to find out what is the maximum value that kids wear can pay. To sham garments. First, let's start with year zero cash flows. Cash flows at year zero. Y zero. Immediate cash flows. Check. Right below the net assets. First item. The sundry fixed assets amounting to 50 lakhs can't be used. And their realizable value is 45 fixed assets. I'll take realizable value because I'm talking about cash flows. Guys, everything are in lakhs. Next. Second cash flow. Stock can be immediately realized for 470. Investments again in flow. Can be disposed of for 212. Next point. Some workers are retrenched for an estimated compensation, guys. Retrenchment compensation. Outflow. Compensation for retrenchment. 130. Negative. Next one. Creditors should be settled immediately. Check the creditors from your net assets. 400. Settled immediately. Negative cash flow again. One liability not existing in the balance sheet. That is a retirement benefits. Negative. 
negative 48. This will give me year 0 cash flow. Net cash flows at year 0. Y0. One forty nine. Net cash flow is one forty nine. So he's asking me what is the maximum value of kiddies well, which Sham government spent pay. Let me take year cash flows, everything in lakhs, then your discount factors, and we get discounted cash flow. Discount factors to be considered at a discount rate of 20% again. I'll start with year 0, and he has given up to 10. Year 0 cash flow we already have 149. Discount factor is 1. Now what is the maximum value that sham garments can pay to kiddies wear? You need to observe what is the incremental cash flow to sham garments. First year sham garment independently earns 1500. But if they take over kiddies wear they are earning 1800. So an incremental cash flow of 300. Or instead of writing it as cash flows you can call it as incremental cash flows. Incremental cash flow. Second year, 1700 independently, combined basis 1900, additional cash flow 200. Next, 2000, 2300, again 300 additional cash flow. Next year, 2500 to 2950, 450 additional cash flow. 3000 to 3500, 500 additional cash flow. 3400 to 4600 additional cash flow. 3800 to 4500, 700 additional cash flow. 8 year, 4500 to 5300, 800 additional cash flow. 9 year, 5000 to 5800, again 800 only additional cash flow. Last year, 6,000 to 6,900, 900 additional cash flow. You have the discount factors. You don't have to calculate. 20% discount factors are 0 0.833, 0 0.695, 0 0.579, 0 0.482, 0 0.402, 0 0.335, 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 that is a maximum what sham garments can offer to kiddies wear.
Can I have the answer? 2013.9. Uh, maximum what they can offer to kids were? He is also asking you what is the difference with the independent valuation of kids were? Independent valuation of kids were, he already gave you the cash flows. All you have to do is the discounting of cash flow. Take only 1 to 10, there is no 0 here. Asking you to find out the independent valuation and the difference with this.
Yes, guys, what is the independent valuation? For uh, difference between these two is what he asked. Seven one eight point one six. This is normal terms. We call it as synergy. We call it as synergy gain, guys. Independently, it is valued at only thirteen hundred. That is at two thousand. Balance we normally call it as synergy gains. So valuation somewhere between 1300 and 2000 will be strike because this is the maximum value. They will not be paying the entire valuation. If they pay the entire valuation, there is no benefit for the other company that is your sham garments at all. And this is the independent valuation. So definitely, Kitties will not be taking anything lower than this. Definitely, the sham garments will not be paying anything higher than this. So the valuation which they will strike is between those two figures. Depends on how much they share the synergy gains. 30 similar problem guys but the only change is instead of giving from 1 to 10 he gave from 10 to 1 years Timby Limited is a business making sports equipment the company operates from Thailand and to globalize its operation Timby Limited identified fine toys an Indian company as a potential takeover candidate and after the due diligence of fine toys the following information is available so from 10 to 1, the years he has given, as well as the cash flows for both Fine Toys and Timby Limited on an independent valuation basis, each figure given in crores. Unfortunately, those net worths, everything is given in lakhs. Okay, uh, either convert the lakhs into crores or crores into lakhs. Do something, but get identical values. You can't change the units. Or oh, there is some net assets which are given to you, and come down below with the points it's giving you. Talks have, have taken over, have crystallized over the following. Timby Limited will not be able to use the machinery worth 75 lakhs which will be disposed of subsequently and the expected realization is 50 lakhs. Inventory receivables are to be taken over at a values of 150 lakhs respectively which is the price they will realize on disposal. So they are again disposing inventories and receivables as well. The liabilities of fine toys will be discharged in full after takeover along with an employee settlements of 90 lakhs from the employees who are not interested in, in, to, in continuing with the new management retrenchment compensation along with the other liabilities of creditors and bank loans given in your net asset calculation Timby Limited will have to invest 150 lakhs for upgrading your plant of fine toys on takeover so 150 limited 150 lakhs of additional cash outflow a further sum of 50 lakhs is to be incurred in the second year to revamp the plant machinery shop of fine toys so the anticipated cash flows post takeover in crores is given to you this is given from 1 to 10 okay so when you're comparing be careful you are required to advise the management as to what is the maximum price that they can pay for fine toys taking a discount rate of 20 percent only maximum price he asked only this one is what he asked only the maximum price no independent valuation so first try try to calculate what is year zero cash flows Cash flows at Y0. Let me put it in lakhs only. I'll convert even that crores to lakhs. First one. Machinery. Realization expected is 50. Inventory. Expected realization is 100. Receivables, expected receive realization is 50. Liability should be paid off. So first one is creditors, negative 165, 
बैंक लोन नेगेटिव टू फिफ्टी रिट्रेंचमेंट कॉम्पनसेशन टू बी पेड टू एम्प्लॉइज नाइंटी अगेन कैश आउट फ्लो Timbi Limited will have to invest further 150 lakhs for on the on takeover. Further investment on takeover. This is also negative 150. The remaining 50 lakhs, which he is talking about, is in the second year. So not at year zero. We have to take year two. So I'll stop it here. This is year zero. Definitely a negative cash flow because your positives are only 200. Five fifty five. Four fifty five. Sorry. Year zero cash flows negative four fifty five. Maximum price. Of is taking our fine toys year incremental cash flows. I'll convert everything into lakhs, and you know the discount factors. We'll find out discounted cash flows. Twenty percent again. So already we calculated the cash flows. You can use that zero to ten. First year incremental cash flow is negative four double five. Come on, check the incremental cash flows with Timber Limited. Timber Limited first year cash flow independently is 16, combined cash flow is 18, 2 crores or 200 lakhs. I'm writing everything in lakhs. Year two, independent cash flows of Timber is 20, combined valuation is 24, guys. But 400 minus 50. Additionally, he has to invest some particular amount for the revamp of plant in year two. Point number four is given, so that will make it only three fifty. Year three, thirty and thirty six, six or six hundred four, thirty two and forty four is twelve hundred, forty four and sixty is sixteen hundred, fifty two and sixty is eight hundred. Fifty-two and eighty. I'm sorry. Fifty-two and eighty is two thousand eight hundred. Ninety-six and sixty three thousand six hundred. Fifty-five and hundred is five thousand five hundred. Seventy and one forty is seven hundred. Sorry, seven thousand. One hundred eight and two hundred is nine thousand two hundred. Ninety two it should be. I'm adding zero, two zeros throughout, converting everything into lakhs. Multiply with the discount factors which we already have. Get the discounted cash flow. That will be the maximum price that they can offer for this company. That is Fine Toys Limited.
Yes, guys, can we have the answer for this discounted cash flow? Seven six nine four point four five. Seven five nine five it is point eight. Be accurate on your calculators, guys, please. Yes, guys, standard question number 31. Summarize balance sheet of R Limited for the year ended 31st March 2010. 2011 and 12 is given to you. Uh, this is the de details which is given and come down to the additional information. The actual valuations were as under building machinery less depreciation is given, stock valuation is given, net profit including the opening balance. After writing of depreciation, goodwill, tax provision and transport to general reserve, these were the balances available. Oh, then he is talking about capital employed in the business at the market value at the beginning of 2009-10 was 73,20,000 which included the cost of goodwill. The normal return on average capital employed on the line of business engaged by R Limited is 12.5%. This is NRR on ca average capital employed. The balance of the general reserve as on 1st April 2009 is 20 lakhs. Right? That is in lakhs and the balance sheet figures are in thousands. Beginning of 2009, April 1st April 2009, it was 2000 thousands. 20 lakhs is nothing what. Come to the balance sheet date, 31st March 2010. Appropriation was 400. Next year, again 400. That next year, again 400. Because check. 2000 became 2400, 2400 became 2800, 2800 became 3200. So every year appropriation to general reserve is 400, 400 and 400. Goodwill as on 31st March 2010 was purchased on 14 2009 for 20 lakhs. Guys it is purchased goodwill. It is purchased goodwill which you can consider. 20 lakhs as on which date the balance in the PNL account was 2,40,000. Find out the average capital employed in each year and if goodwill is calculated at 5 years of purchase of simple super profits on a simple average method. The total value of the business is what he has to calculate on 31st March 2012. Guys, when it is a purchase goodwill, you can go for including that in your capital employed as well. You can have alternative calculation, we can exclude that goodwill also. But whenever he is specifically saying that it is a purchase goodwill, we normally can include it as far as your capital employed calculations are concerned. So let's take up the valuations. Come on. So guys, there are three years. So every year we need to calculate the FMPs. Every year we need to calculate your average capital employed. So let's start with FMPs. I'm talking about every year now. So I need first year is 2009, 10, 10, 11 and 11-12. Take the balances that he has given. Net profits given. So below he has given you after the balance sheet last figure in the table is 840 
चलो लेट्स चेक द एडजस्टमेंट दिस नेट प्रॉफिट इज इंक्लूडिंग ओपनिंग बैलेंस सो लेट्स डिडक्ट द ओपनिंग बैलेंस दैट कैन नॉट बी नेट प्रॉफिट इट इज लास्ट इयर्स प्रॉफिट ओपनिंग बैलेंस नाइन टेन ओपनिंग बैलेंस शुड बी फर्स्ट अप्रैल 2009 चेक व्हाट इज द प्रॉफिट ऑन फर्स्ट अप्रैल 2009 profit was 240 point number d the balance was on that date itself was it was purchased goodwill was purchased on 1409 for 20 lakhs on which day the balance of your pnl was 2 lakh 40000 everything i am writing in thousands so i write it as 240 next year no guesses check your balance sheet what is it the ending on 31st march 2010 should be the opening balance of 2011 Balance sheet P and L two eighty, and the balance sheet P and L next year is three twenty. It is included in the net profits given, so let's reduce it. Next, net profit includes opening balances after writing of depreciation, which is proper, and after writing of goodwill. Let's add back. i am valuing goodwill so i can't write off goodwill whatever is goodwill written off keep adding it back come on first year what is the goodwill appearing 2000s come down below the goodwill was purchased on 1409 for 20 lakhs that is 2000 so nothing is written off in the first year 2009 10 but in the next year 10 11 he wrote off 400 in that next year again he wrote off 400 Check goodwill. Two thousand became sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred became twelve hundred. That means first year he did not write off anything because that was the rate at which he purchased. Twenty lakhs is nothing but two thousand thousands. First year ending also it was two thousand thousands only. So nothing written off in the first year. Then it became sixteen hundred, four hundred written off. Then it became twelve hundred, four hundred written off. Next, read again. After writing off depreciation, goodwill. good will be added back tax provision absolutely correct because compulsory we have to take profit after tax but and also transfer to goodwill sorry general reserve add back the transfer to general reserve appropriation to general reserve what you are appropriating to general reserve is your profit only check appropriation to general reserve first april 09 balance of general reserve and point number c given is 20 lakhs 2000s Check about balance sheet at the end of the year. It was two thousand four hundred, four hundred increase. Next year, two thousand eight hundred again, four hundred increase. Next year, three thousand two hundred again, four hundred increase. That is it. You have profits for three years. Thousand. I think this is seventeen sixty. This is two one two zero. I guess. Check 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 values. <coughs> These are the profits which we need to calculate with average capital employed each years. Let's try to get average capital employed each year. First, let's get the closing capital employed as on 31st March 2010, 31st March 2011, and 31st March 2012. Let's get the closing capital employed first. then we can think about average building and machinery valuations are given to you first asset is goodwill i'll include it i'm assuming it as purchase sorry it is given as purchase goodwill so i'm adding it i'm not assuming anything it is given
building and machinery. Guys, if you don't add goodwill, then ex even including this value, you will get towards the end. Nothing else. You don't take also, I don't mind. The building and machinery is 3,600. Revalued figures are given below. 4,000. 4,400. Next, talk. That also change in valuation. 2400, 2800, 3200. Next, datas. There is no change in the valuations which is suggested there. So you can observe the same values for datas. 40, 320, 880. Final, last bank balance. 240, 400. 800. Some total will give total assets. Reduce it with the outside liability which is only 1. I have only 1 outside liability that is your creditors. 1200, 1600 and 2000. That will give you closing capital employed. That is closing. How do you get average now? This closing will become next year's opening. This closing will become next year's opening. So what is missing? Only first year's opening is missing. First year's opening he has given somewhere. Check. Yep. The opening capital employed at the beginning of 2019 at its market value is 7320. So opening capital employed. This is 7320. This should be same figure 7080 and 7520. Considering these two, I can calculate average. Average capital employed is simply opening plus closing divided by 2. This is 7200. This is 7300. Is eight thousand average capital employed then FMP here NRR given you can calculate super profits get a simple average of super profits multiplied by five you get the goodwill computation of goodwill. Start with FMP is given. FMP we already calculated as 1000, 1760 and 2120. Compare it with normal profits. Normal profits are 12.5% of capital employed. 
average capital employed into 12.5%. Compare this, you get super profit. Strike the simple average of super profits. Your goodwill is exactly 5 times. Five years purchase of super profit, simple average method. You have average capital employed, multiply with 12.5%. That is given to you as an RR in point number B. That should give you your normal profits. Get the super profits, take a simple average, multiply by 5, you get the answer. Can we have the answers? Take a simple average. Six hundred change, I guess. Six eighty-nine. Five multiplier. Get the goodwill. Three double four five. Four eight 